And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please welcome to the ice the members of the 2016 NCAA National Champions from the University of North Dakota. Welcome back to the has presented by 10K Takes, brought to you always by the Chill Boys, www.chillboys.com. Get your men's socks and underwear and long johns, whatever you do. Bamboo underwear, socks, get your stuff here. It's the best stuff ever. And you know what? I've been talking to the Chill Boys recently, and they want to up the game here. Love They're going to offer 15% off your first purchase, even to the listeners. So listeners, type in HB15 as your code on chillboys.com and get 15% off your first order. So, and today, luckily I'm joined by Trevor Olson, Jack Mason, my name is Gage Osmus, and Bo Brower, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, guys. It's exciting. Happy to happy to be here and talk some hockey and got college playoffs here. It's a Best time of the year. It's an exciting time for us. Bo's a Notre Dame alumni, and and as you all know, we've got a couple Nodak guys in the house here. It's, we got we got a big matchup this weekend, or actually on Thursday. So I thought it was right to have Bo on this week, just uh, with the rivalry there. It just works out well. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time here. Anything anything good happen over the weekend, fellas? Ols, what'd you get up to? Uh, I got involved over in St. Paul. Uh, my family came down. We went to the uh, Wild game. We saw Joe Stee. That was pretty fun. And then um, we buckled up for the weekend for the uh, NCHC games how, as well. How Joe nice. look out there? Joe looked good. I'm excited for him to get a little uh, extra leash out there. Um, yeah. It looked like with the travel and stuff, you know, they were only playing him 10, 12 minutes, but... Josie's nasty, so yeah, I'm just we, hoping he gets a gets a shot, and and we'll see how he does. Nice, Bo. How about you? How's your weekend? Do you do anything fun? Anything you know remarkable? Um, I actually, um, I had a fortunate chance. I had a good buddy, actually, a teammate in Worcester that uh, was down in Florida, uh, Hope Sound. It was Michael Jordan's country club called Grove Twenty Three, and he took me and a couple guys out there to it's kind of a bachelor party, if you will, and we had a we had a hell of a time. It was unbelievable and just kind of like a, a grown-up playground out there. Course was phenomenal. Clubhouse was phenomenal. Um, ran into a couple of big-name people and uh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky being one of them. <laughs> yeah, he's not bad. He played hockey. Not a bad name. Once he's, upon yeah. a time. <laughs> so, but, I'm sure you guys didn't have any. Didn't have too many drinks down there either at the clubhouse. There. Oh, no drinks, no cigars. So. <laughs> You know, I may have uh, purchased too much in the uh, pro shop, but uh, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get back there. So it was, it was an incredible experience, and the course was phenomenal. So and got a little burnt, but uh, yeah, we we had a good time. That, so that's a trip that you have to splurge on. I feel like oh, you got like you said, you'll probably never ever get back there again. So yeah. that's oh, when you get yeah. off the wallet and you're like, it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. you know, sorry, sorry, future kids, this one's putting a dent in your scholarship money here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I mean, it's one of those things where it's like you could make a you know trip out to schedule a Pinehurst, Sand Valley, Bandon Dude, something like that. But you know, when someone asks you like, "Hey, do you want to come play Grove 23?" It's like, eh, yeah, I should probably do that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I had plans, but I'm going to cancel those. <laughs> yeah, <do> immediately, <laughs> immediately cancel. <laughs> Mace, how about you? You have a good weekend. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I uh, just went to the NCHC face-off games this weekend and got pretty drunk. So, yeah, it was a good weekend. <laughs> sounds, like an, sounds like an unbelievable time. Sounds pretty similar to mine. I was really looking forward to Saturday as well. Just, uh, you know, I went down Friday, obviously wore the Letterman, shaved in the mustache, went as Ozzo, the Ozzo character, you know. Yep. Nice. Um, had myself a hell of a time, you know, met a bunch of has-been listeners there. Um, it's always great being around the North Dakota people, but... Uh, Tough outcome for us Friday, so I didn't go down Saturday to watch the Bulldogs do whatever the fuck they do, you know. They won. <laughs> Big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it seems like the Bulldogs just always somehow pull it together they when playoffs come around. And, I mean, as, as at, you know, at least recently they have, and it's – uh but no, that was, you know, I had a big weekend planned. I was really looking forward to Saturday, but it is what it is. You know, we never, you know – 
North Dakota really never shows up that Friday night, so um, tough yeah. one, but that's all right. You know, we got the tournament coming up, easy com- easy opponents coming up with Notre Dame. Irish. <laughs> 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 do, you, do you guys get uh, recognized? Like, if you guys, the, the fans are down from North Dakota, are you guys still getting recognized as alums? Like, do they know the players pretty well, or what was what that kind of yeah. like? Yeah, yeah, I mean... With North Dakota fans, you know, it's kind of all they have up there, and, and it's a pretty tight-knit community, and they, mm. they really enjoy the hockey team. So you do get a quite a, quite a few people that recognize you, but we are, you know, starting to get to that age mm. where, you know, we don't quite look what we used to, <laughs> you know, look like what we used to look like, you know, when they saw us playing. So it's a little, they kind of, like, give you a longer stare, like, uh, is that uh, – oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Look a little older, yeah, a little fatter. A little fatter. <laughs> I was going to say, that's my main point. And, <laughs> and I definitely didn't have a muzzy back then. But <laughs> Yeah, great. no, it's a, it's fun getting back there for sure. You see a lot of people you know and, and yeah. that you've that you met in college going to Grand Forks there. So it's really fun getting those weekends, you know, even if they you know win or lose, it's always a good time. But uh, let's get into our predictions here. And what we're going to do um, for the predictions this week is we're going to try to predict – the uh, the winner of each regional, so it's going to be a little harder. Um, records probably won't be as good as they usually are. Not that they're good at the start, but um, I mean, we're going to try to pick the Frozen Four here, and I'm going to start off. I'm going to start us off with the, uh, you know, the one that's in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We got Michigan, American International, QPAC, and the Huskies. Um, Ols, do you want to start us out? Sure. I will. Um, ooh, this is tough. I'm going to go. <clears throat> Taking that upset first round. I see. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. <laughs> March Madness buzzing in my brain. Like, oh, you yeah. know, Anything 16 against a one. They, they, they did it against St. Cloud. I know it. I'm going um, Quinnipiac. It's a good pick, Rand. Is that Rand Pecknold over there? Is he still coaching the team? Yeah, they they deserve one. He's sorry about that. He does he does a pretty good job <laughs> of that organization. Yeah. Bo, Bo, what what would your pick be here? Yeah, I'm actually going with Trevor too on this. I got I got Quinnipiac over Michigan to go to the Frozen Four. So my dad was a U of M alum, so I'm sure he's rooting for them. But um, sorry, Dad. Tough <laughs> luck, tough yeah. luck, Mister Bauer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mace. Uh, I don't want this to happen, but I'm picking Michigan. Smart. Ooh. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually gonna. Go, I'm gonna go with a uh, Michigan, uh, Saint Cloud quarterfinal there. I got Saint Cloud mm. beating QPAC, and then I'm gonna have Michigan moving on. Okay. Um, as much as I hate to admit it, but they're pretty good. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with them. We're gonna move down to Loveland, Colorado. After this, we've got Denver, UMass Lowell, Duluth, Michigan Tech. I think it's going to be an NCHC <clears throat> final there where Duluth will win and make it to their 37th straight <laughs> Frozen Four, it seems like. It seems like you can just pencil it. You can just pen them into the Frozen Four. Yeah. Know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, but you I'm know gonna what? Denver's been pretty damn good the yeah. last, you know. Yeah, they have. I'm, yeah, I'm that's, sticking that's, with that's it. A, that's a good pick. Bo, what do you think? Yeah, the, I, gosh. I'm actually – I don't like – UMD for obvious reasons losing to them in the national championship. So I'm I'm just gonna axe them right away. Um, this is a pretty, I, lo- I love that. Yeah, this is pretty a pretty good regional here. But mm-hmm. um, I got Tech and Denver playing, and then I I want to take the uh, the Huskies to take down Denver for a a little Frozen Four action. Wow, yeah, I, I like uh, that. Michigan Tech yeah. getting some action. A little I bit like of hot that. take. Yeah. yeah, I like that. UP heading down to the Frozen Four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good night. I'm going to Luth. After seeing them play this weekend, they Yuck. look hot. I know. Okay, I like that. You know, as much as I, my heart, my head, my head is saying, pick the Bulldogs. Yeah. But my heart, for I don't know what reason, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Pioneers here. Denver. Their it's hometown, a, a, they're driving probably what forty five minutes to Loveland out of Denver. And, that's a great point. You wow. know, probably get the fans out there in the uh, Budweiser Event Center. I hope <laughs> hell of a rink there. Used to play there with the uh, Colorado Eagles. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with the Pios here. Love it. Wow. All right. Next, we're moving on to Worcester. You know, people. It's people would say 
you know, I think people from the Midwest would call this place Worcester or Worcester. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. actually Worcester because, you know, <laughs> those those people out east can't really pronounce their R's too well. So <laughs> That's we're going to go Worcester. Yeah. I, had some, I had some struggles. So I played there, obviously. Yeah. And I, <laughs> it's a tough know, one to say, right? It is. I, I had the hard R, like what Worcester. Yes. And, and it was <laughs> like, and it's like, it's kind of silent <laughs> R, but it's like. Worcester and like you can even say Worcester if you want like but it's like it's not Worcester it's like oh okay like don't say that like you end up the wrong side of town and you'll lose your wallet so, yeah. all right good to know yeah so we got uh in Worcester who do we got here we've got Western Michigan the one seed play Northeastern then we got Minnesota versus Massachusetts it will be Western versus Minnesota <clears throat> and mm. I love my Bronx Western Michigan Lawson lunatics are yeah. into the front. Yeah. Of the Love them. Love them. Yeah. Yeah, Trevor, I'm with you actually again, uh, just like Allentown. I like Western advancing, um, but I'm going to take them over Mass. So Mass is going to take down Minnesota. And I'd like I'd like to see the Broncos advance as well. So Is is Massachusetts now, they they won last year, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. I always get, I kind of get these mixed up because I can't remember which year was canceled and which year played because of COVID. The one that, that was last year that they won. They played. They canceled 2020, right? No, I think they canceled last year. No, I think it was. Yeah, I don't know. We need a fact check. <laughs> uh, Mace, we might need a fact check here. I think they canceled 2020 and then they played 2021. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. there's actually a guy from Edina, Garrett Waite. Yep. I think he played for, uh, he might have played for Minnesota, then transferred to Massachusetts, but he won the Natty with. Oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. I can't remember. I think it was last year. I can't remember. Well, that. A 2020 checks out because Notre Dame got a bid because some a team like dropped out because of COVID. And then I think you no know, somebody at Notre Dame got COVID, so they had to drop out too. And then I think the whole thing got shut down. Mace might have an answer for us. Uh, I think that was last year in 2021. I Ooh. just found an article on it. Uh-oh. That Mass won it or it shut down? Uh, that was shut down. I'll have to- because wasn't wasn't last year Kawaguchi and those guys last year? This is their first year pro. It was. So Kawaguchi. But if you remember, the double OT game where Duluth didn't play the first mm-hmm. game, they got a bye into the quarterfinals. That, oh, and then Nodak played. Got it right there. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, last year was, was Mass. Glad we figured ah, that out. Okay, okay, there we are. <laughs> Glad wow. we figured We're that out. We're college the hockey, long way. <laughs> college hockey experts here. Don't think anything <laughs> else of us. Yeah. You know, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> um, just mixed up the years there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, so you're going with Western. Got, yeah, got the Bronx. Mace. This is going to be bold, what? and you know, this is a series I thought about a lot. Mm. Northeastern. Wow. Wow. They've got that goalie, right? Yeah. Is that the reason? Mm-hmm. They've got that goalie. I, I've seen some tweets. People are saying he might win the Mike Richter player of the year. Hobie. Hobie. The, oh, yeah. I did see that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So he might he might right. be able to carry him. That's a tough first round matchup for a one seed there. Yeah. Not for Western, um, though. I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm going all powerhouses in the Frozen Four here. I'm 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 taking the Gophers to make her to the Frozen Four. Really? Wow. Yeah, that'd be good for hockey. It'd be, it, good for their it'd fan be base. great, and I I want that matchup because we all know who I'm picking out of the next round. But <laughs> <laughs> who's that? <laughs> now let's move on to Albany, New York, and we've got Minnesota State versus Harvard and Nodak versus Notre Dame. I'm gonna go uh, North Dakota versus. Harvard, and I'm taking North Dakota to go to the Frozen Four. Wow. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got Mankato beating Harvard, even though I got a good friend, Casey Dorenbach, on Harvard. And I'd like to see Harvard go far, but yeah. um, I got them, and then I have to ride with the uh, the Gold Dome yep. in Notre Dame, and I'm going to take Notre Dame advancing over Mankato. Wow. So okay. I, there it I is. Have to. I, I can't like not. that. No, can't you, can't you have to. You have to. Mace, no duck. It's all easy. right, all right. Yeah, I'm also. Um, this is a really hard one for me, but um, I've got Nodak versus Minnesota State. It was honestly tough for me to pick Minnesota State over that first game because it seems like that's the hump they can't get over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I do think they'll they'll beat Harvard. You know, those Harvard guys already have you know a good degree. They don't they don't need to win some hockey games. They're already okay. <laughs> um, but I got Nodak yeah. moving on. You know, they got a good record against the team the teams in the tournament. And I actually saw you know someone released a record uh, or a, a sheet, a stat sheet of all the teams that are in the tournament, and then their record against the other teams that are in the tournament. And one, three, and four are all in Albany. It's it's Mankato number one, who is who's got the best winning record against the teams in the tourney. North Dakota number three and Notre Dame number four. Oh wow! Really? Yep. Huh. Power crazy, kind of yeah. crazy, but yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a stacked that's a stacked division there. But I feel like uh, Harvard. They're coming off a big ECAC win, so they got some momentum too. They do. So it's something to look you out never for. Really, you never really want to run into those teams either. So no, um, if that happened to us, our uh, our sophomore year it was the year you guys won it, and we ran into. We were still in hockey East yeah. at Notre Dame. We ran into Northeastern. We got to buy in the first round of hockey's playoffs. Northeastern was coming off of just like I don't I don't know if it was some absurd winning streak, but they like it hadn't was they they lost I a game. They had they hadn't lost a game in twenty one games. It, yeah. yeah, since like winter break. It was yeah. stupid. And and our captain, I love the guy, but he's like, all right, like you know, our bye week. He's like, all right, nobody go out. Like everybody, like stay in. Like don't do anything. And like all of us are like, should we like be together? Like going out, like yeah. <laughs> having fun, enjoying the weekend we have yeah. off instead of not being together. We get swept both games, and thankfully we're in the pairwise, so we've made it to yeah. the tournament. But like, yeah. we got absolutely smoked by them, <laughs> and it's just like, eh, well. That's... I remember, yeah, that was the Northeastern was the team we ran into first round. So you guys in the regional, you played Michigan, Michigan. in Cincinnati, yep. and we played Northeastern, and we're like, you know, I think we got the two seed overall in in the tournament, and we had to run into Northeastern. And it's like. Oh shit! You put us up against these guys, the hottest, yeah. the hottest team. Twenty one games unbeaten. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Whoops! <laughs> I remember they. Do you remember? You remember when they scored? They had uh, what? You remember Nolan Stevens? Pretty yeah. good. Pretty good player. His dad coached the Kings for a little while. Yep. Um, they scored like first two minutes. And oh, they geez. skate, they skate, they're skating by our bench. They can't fucking skate with us. They can't hang with us. And we're all like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Then we ended up going on. I think we won five too. It was, it yeah. was okay. It ended up oh. being okay, but <clears throat> that had, was scary. That is scary. They had that other guy, uh, Colton Sosserman. You guys remember? Yes, that name? big beard, yeah. Idaho. Yeah, that's worse. That's how I know that guy. I yeah. played against him, and yeah, he's got the. He's a thug. He's got the lumberjack. Yeah, but Whoa, he's kind of butter. When I, oh, he's nasty. <laughs> he's kind he's of nasty. butter. Oh yeah. When I, I was know. playing him in the coast, he had a beard down to his. It, yeah. You couldn't even see the logo on his jersey. It was that long. <laughs> yeah, he looked like that guy from. I'm blanking on the movie, but it's that Christmas movie with the. He's like the Axeman, and it's like that anime yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. I know yeah. exactly. It's like one of those Heatmeister, like old time yes. flicks. You got the heat. My, I'm Mister Heatmeister. What? Yeah. He's Mister Sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never heard that too. No. All right, all right. We'll move on. We'll okay. move on. Whatever. All right. Let's get into our hypotheticals here. I've got a couple random questions for us to do here. Um, would you rather hit a walk off home run or score an OT winner? Mm. I'm gonna go. I kind of want to move this. I kind of want to like up the ante here mm-hmm. and say like. You know the walk off home run is, is you know to win a game in the World Series, and then the OT winners to win a game in the Stanley Cup. Okay, it's game one. It's it, it could be any game. I don't think it's a. I don't want it to go closing because okay. I think we'd all pick walk. I mean, yeah. the walk off home run. Yeah. yeah, that'd be gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. So let's say game one of the finals. <clears throat> I'm going with uh, OT winner. Because I've luckily had a few in my days, and they're very fun. Yeah, very fun. You get the boys piling on. Oh yeah, guys all over you. You know, you're just, you're yeah. just up yeah. in the ear. Just. <laughs> 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 oh, that's I'm, unreal. Yeah, I'm going OT winner. Sure. I, I think honestly, I, I'm going to make a kind of an argument for the walk off home run because it's like. The home runs don't happen. They happen, but not as often. Like a goal has to happen for a point, right? Like you don't need to hit a home run to get a point in baseball. And so like if I had the perfect scenario, it would be at the Metrodome on the Twins, 
walk off home run. Like yeah. it's just like that place was electric. They got the tarps lifted up and the nosebleeds and the whole yeah. place is going wild. And you got the milk jug and, you know, right outfield. So I, I think if I had that scenario, I'd pick that. Otherwise, you know, OT winner would be pretty sick. Too. I yeah. like that. It's a tough one. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Mace, what do you think you're going with here? You know, um, when I played hockey, I wasn't exactly the biggest scorer. I was uh, kind of locked down defense, but you know, Respect. it would feel <laughs> damn good to get that OT winner. So I'm going OT. Love mm. it. Yeah, I like that. I I thought about you know it was this one's very close. You know, both one kind of the same thing, but yeah. you know, there's I don't I think the walk off home run in baseball is the coolest thing in sports that you can do. Because, you know, it's just you up there, you know, in a hockey you score an OT winner, it could be like a backdoor tapping where the guy who makes the pass actually made the play. So like you're yeah. just the one that tapped it in That's or you fair. know if you hit that walk off home run, it's like it's only you and like you had the game in your hands. You want it, and then you get to do whatever you like. It's off your bat, and you let's flip it and just do whatever <laughs> you true. want. You know, well, you got to round the bases too. Yeah, like and you like, whole... I mean, how fast are you running those bases? Like, are you just slow I mean, molasses? Just, <laughs> just jump. <laughs> <laughs> molasses. You got one? Do you oh, have yeah. one hand up running? Like just looking. Around. I, I think yeah. I'm doing the one. Oh, Kirk Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the Edwin and Carcio and take the Barrett for a trot. And throw it up there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you get 45 seconds or however long it takes. You trot that, and it's like you get the bask in that glory until, oh, yeah. you know, you're like Big Poppy jumping on the yeah. home plate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ima- imagine that feeling jumping on home plate in that yeah. scenario. Just the boys huddling around. It's always the jump up and down. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. in Those... hockey, there might be a little dog pile or something. But yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one. Would you rather be really good looking but kind of dumb, or would you rather be kind of ugly but really smart? Okay, so are we talking like <clears throat> really hot? Yep. Like smoke show. Yep. And are we talking like really dumb? I'm not. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're really like your Zac Efron. Okay. I don't think Zach Efron is dumb, but you look like Zach yes. Efron. Okay. You're kind of a blockhead. Um, you see neighbors, right? Where he's the yeah, fat yeah, guy. yeah. I mean, basically a, him. Yeah, yeah. You're him. It's a good scenario. Yeah, or you're you're ugly, but you're you're a fucking wizard, like Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk isn't that ugly. I would no. maybe even go but, like uh, Bill Gates. Maybe, I but mean, you're I don't that think Bill smart. Gates. But he's not. You know, Bill Gates isn't on any cover of Hollister or anything. But you know? you're that no. smart. I think. Yeah. Well. That's a ridiculous. <laughs> that's a ridiculous. So like, a, smart, like yeah. a step down from there. Yeah, a little step down I, from there. I don't think you're a. You're I'm the, going. I'm going ugly and smart. Yeah. Because I'm a four already. <laughs> so like, like, <laughs> There's advantages to both, obviously. Well, for sure. Yeah. But I'm going. I'm going mm-hmm. ugly and very smart. Yeah. I'm, I, I think. I think it's kind of one of those scenario things. It's like if you're really good looking but dumb and you're like maybe you're really musicianly talented yeah. or like you're a model or something like that and you can find a way to make money with you know your looks but not your brains okay sure maybe but like if you're playing the long game and you're just incredibly smart it's like it's probably a good chance you're going to make a lot of money someday and yeah. you know I kind of, the long game I think I might go dumb but really smart just because yeah. in the end you probably know what to do with your money and for sure make some yeah. good investments. I don't yeah. know. Yep. So, Mace, what do you what do you think you're picking here? <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, <laughs> I like that long run idea. Um, yeah, it's it's clear that if you're smart, you're gonna be okay. Your future is gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm banking on the chance that I'm a rock star though, or something. So, Kid Rock. I'll take pretty pretty good looking, but super dumb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, like like Bo said. I mean, obviously, if you're smart, you're gonna be. It's probably you know that's your safest bet to to have an okay life. You yeah. Because if you're really good looking, how long does that last? How much do people care? I mean, some guys can make it last till sixty. You know, there's some hot sixty year old guys and girls <laughs> walking around out there. You know, like right. you keep care of yourself. You know. 
Yeah. You still got some, and there are some ways, like you said, Bo. Like there are some ways you can make money if you're if you're you know really good looking, but kind of dumb, you know, kind of a blockhead. But yeah, I mean, it's tough not to pick the smart guy because yeah. you know you're going to be okay in the future. Like yeah. it doesn't matter, and if you're really smart. You make a lot of money. I mean, nowadays you can kind of just buy your way into being good looking, right? Like <laughs> that's not a bad just get point. Some, just get some Botox, some you know, <laughs> some facial things done. You know, get some liposuction if you're a little chubby and start working out. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Start working able, out. <laughs> if you're smart, I feel like there's a better possibility of you turning yourself into good looking than if you're really good looking turning yourself into being smart yeah and a girl can just pop a bag on you if they need to (laughs) and do girls really even care about if you're good looking or not when you're older it's kind of about what what size your wallet is you know like if you're hanging around these models like (laughs) they're not hanging around some you know hot guy that's hanging in the pool they're hanging on some you know 50 year old ugly you know saggy guy who's got a billion dollars in his pocket that's a great point <laughs> so yeah i might i'm gonna pick the smart guy i, I like think that. i'll find a way <laughs> to be good looking yeah. For sure. if i'm that smart yeah. <laughs> i like it um this one's kind of just it's really opinion based and i wanted to ask you guys i just wanted to know your your opinion on it would you rather have and, – and it's either one or the other. You can't have the other one. The other one's off off mm-hmm. limits. So it's either – you can you can either watch Netflix, either Hulu, HBO, or you can either have Spotify and Apple Music or whatever. You can either listen to music and have those streaming services or you can have Netflix or whatever it is. I'm going to go with um... – <clears throat> The video subscription, Netflix, HBO, things of that nature. So music's just gone. So I can't even listen to the radio? You can listen to radio. Okay, that's what I do anyway. I have Pandora with the... <laughs> I should have thought about this before. Yeah. He this doesn't is... even fucking have one. He's got I don't, Pandora. I don't, I don't have Apple Music. I don't have Spotify. Not a su- subscription anyways. And I listen, I have Pandora, the free version, where I get the advertisements every two songs. With you, Pandora, you could kind of count. Like, I feel like you got to ax Pandora. Like, okay, so you can't you can't have Pandora. I can't still? have any listening. No, yeah, you can't have any of those. You just... Still, I, I drive a 99 Buick Century Limited, okay. so huh. there, it's radio only in there. So I'm going to stick with my video okay. subscription. Okay, sure. Um yeah, I uh, I probably the same way, honestly. Like I love new music and I love I love singing, I love karaoke, I love just kind of the whole um experience that it brings with it and I love concerts too, but I'd probably go subscription video just because I'm also a movie buff too. Yeah. I, I think I get more entertainment out of that. Like I I just saw Batman. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I haven't Batman. yet. I Un- haven't. I saw unbelievable. It. Unbelievable. Great. And it, yeah, it's like if, if that was off limits to not be able to go to the movie theater, you could only see that in a subscription, and I couldn't have access to that, I'd be like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like, I got to I, I don't know. I'm bigger into that. I think that entertainment goes a little further for me than music does. I, but, you know, again, opinion. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Well, so what was your – how did you feel about this? So well, obviously, well, let's not ruin anything here. Okay. okay. I have not seen it yet. but No spoilers. Continue. No yeah. spoilers. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just saying, how did you feel? You know, obviously the Batman, we're all accustomed to Christian Bale being Batman. Yeah. Because he's, I, I've i watched the other movies. I, that wasn't my time, so I can't comment too much. But it's, for me, it's like Christian Bale's Batman, and there's nothing that's ever going to compare to that. So I've kind of been, you know, like that Ben Affleck one, didn't even watch it. Mm. It was it was Batman versus Superman or whatever. Yeah. I didn't I didn't want to watch it because I'm okay. like, yeah, I'm just like I, I'm a Christian Bale guy. Well, then this one comes out. I'm hearing good things. Um, I go to it. It's it's hard to get over that Christian Bale isn't Batman and it's not a Christopher Nolan movie. But um, again, I thought it was great. I was I was pumped leaving the movie, even though it was very long. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a marathon. You got to be a movie guy to get through it. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was really well done. I thought that it was kind of the perfect recipe of, and you, again, you got to be into these kind of movies, but like it was a crime. It was a thriller. It was dark. It was a little creepy. And obviously you got the action with Batman. So it's, I think it was kind of the right mix of if you're into that kind of stuff, it's like, oh my gosh, this is really good. Where are they going next with this? It was hard to predict. Like the Riddler was like, what is he trying to do? For and then, sure. Like once it all clicked, it was just like, oh my God, like 
wow, like that is incredible. But I thought Robert Pattinson did an unbelievable job. Great job. Of Batman. And there's there's one scene in particular. When I was when I was little, I had a Batmobile and I, I'm sure you remember it, but he's like he fires up the Batmobile to go after the paying one. And I was just like, Oh my like that cinematography is just yeah. Just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah let's <laughs> so, go. Yeah, yeah. So, I love that. That's, that's all I have to say about that. So, no more spoilers. <laughs> Mace? I could easily live without Netflix. I really don't watch a lot of TV, surprisingly, besides sports. Yeah. You know, I'm also I'm I'm also kind of a movie buff. You know, I, I love, you know, films and, and how they, you know, how they shoot them. And just to give you an example, nine, there's this movie, 1917. A lot of people don't love it. Unreal. But I, yeah, exactly. I thought it was unbelievable because, and in most people who don't pay attention to movies, they wouldn't know this, but in most movies, you know, they cut scenes, you know, like it's showing this scene and then they'll, they'll cut to, you know, wherever else, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, this movie is shot one scene it never cuts scene it just follows you know the, the the camera goes it never cuts scene and it's just so cool to like think about how you make a movie like that and mm. um the amount of time and like creative you yeah, do you know how they directed that no no clue yeah so they like they had to do like five minutes at a time like it was like three to five minutes where they'd shoot the whole thing and then they'd have to do so many takes where they would just blend it into another so yeah. it, so again it didn't look like there was the only cut scene was when the guy passed out in the middle of the night and then it you know he came to or whatever but that yeah. was really other than that the camera had to fall in the whole time and you know whatever technology is to make it look like that they had to do enough takes where when they picked it up because it's not like you could just do the whole two hours yeah. in one sitting right you had to go through and you know they would go for three to five minutes whatever it was and do that maybe 10 times and then they would pick up the next one and then it was able to just blend it all in together with the That's special wild. effects but it was i yeah gage i'm with you 1917 was yeah if you if you think about just making that if you're the director it just it's insane but mm -hmm. it's a really cool movie there but that being said nowadays in my life right now I'd, I'd have to go music i listen to music more than i watch um wild netflix or whatever Holy it is. turn of so, events there yeah i mean it's t this one was really tough for me because <laughs> and and if you and if you the hell just happened and if you'd have asked me if you'd have asked me two years ago Two years ago, and a you know a decade long after that, it would have always been Netflix or you know streaming service. But now it's it's kind of changed. So, um, yeah, I, I, that was a tough one. But <laughs> I don't know. It up on it. I wanted, a wild ride. I, I wanted that. to get I wanted to get it out there though that I do enjoy like, a TV show and movie. You know, that I was a good that, cliffhanger. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was kept good. the people guessing. <laughs> yeah, sucked, sucked us in just enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's get into Bo's playing career here. So Bo's for me, Dinah. Um, it's got a pretty cool career here. So Bo, you play you play any Dinah? Um, you play high school there for three years. And correct me if I'm wrong. Did you win two state championships there? Just one. Just, just 2013. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they won it in um, 2010, and I was a freshman still playing Bantams. And then 2011, we lost in double overtime to Duluth East, and that was a, then Duluth East lost to Kyle Rao and company at Eden Prairie. That's him. That's you. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we lost three two triple overtime. Oh, so JoJo Janetta? Yeah. Ah, bring, was, Brit, let's yeah. bring it up again. Did they lose in that championship game? <laughs> I did. I did everything I could. Two goals. We lost three two. I don't know what else you want from me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not <a big> deal. <laughs> That's what it's the has been. This is what we talk about. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was like Edina. I remember my sophomore year. Like all the. The people at our high school were chanting like Joe Joe Janetta must not play well tonight. <laughs> and, you know, obviously we didn't win, but like it, that was like one of the one of the loudest eruptions and maybe maybe the loudest I've ever heard a stadium is when you guys scored that overtime winner against against us and um because he died and just won it. Yep. And obviously, like you've heard Dave Spihar say, like, you know, the public schools hate the private or the private hate the public. The North hates the Metro and everybody hates Edina. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and it was just like by far just like when you guys scored, it was like, 
Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I, I feel bad for the Edina guys. Cause most guys I've met from Edina, I mean, almost every one of them has been great, 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 great dudes. People. Yeah. But you know, like when you're in that state, when you're at state <laughs> oh, in the high school, literally off. every person in that rink, that's not from Edina is like, God, I hate it. I fucking hope Edina loses <laughs> yeah. here. Like everyone's lo- It's like, it's like a, it's like a Vikings fan watching the Packers. They're just like, I love watching the Packers just so I can watch them lose. It's like everyone in Minnesota is like, I want to watch you dine and just hope they lose the whole time. <laughs> but it's, I, I like think like teams like Duluth, these teams like Edina, like a lot, there's a lot of teams that like you like to have in the tournament. It makes it a better tournament yeah. than yeah. having those historical teams. And I obviously I'm biased from Edina, but it's just, I think it makes it more exciting. Like this year's state tournament had a lot of great teams in it and it made it really fun to watch. Yeah, it did. Just in that sense. It you, did. Yeah. Did you guys ever see that meme of a Duluth East kid flicking off Edina? Yeah, that was my senior year. Yeah. It was Tyler and Andy's goal. So, yeah. so the guy that was flipping him off, uh, I golf with him in Duluth before I moved down here. Like he's one of my good buddies. No way. Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I was like Tyler and Andy was skating to the boards, and like I was right behind him. Like it's like seeing that all happen, just like the guy flipping him, flipping yeah. the bird, yeah. and then it, it it was the front page or whatever it was. Yeah. Is like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that was fucking hilarious. So, Bo, what was that like your senior year? Um, obviously, I mean. At the time, you know, when you're playing high school hockey, and, and obviously if it's your, if it's your senior year, like that's that's the biggest day of your life up to that moment. Yeah, you know, like when you're playing in that game, and you know what what was that like playing in that game, going into that game, in front of that crowd, eventually winning it. I mean, that has to be some type of experience. It was, yeah, it was incredible. So uh, you know, going back to you know, my dad played um, at Edina, and he played at Michigan too, but he won state back in 1982 so it was like always like a dream that i had it was like you know, i hope i'm fortunate enough to you know a make you dine varsity and as your kid growing up that's you know what you wanted to do being thrown into hockey right and then you get there and it's like oh my and you know then you're a big part of the team because like you know sophomore year you, you i played For a good sure. amount but like there were so sure. many other players that yeah. were getting the playing time and junior year another story and you know benil ended up winning it and then senior year um you know, we beat Lakeville North and then took uh, Duluth East down. And I thought they were, um, the you know, the one team that I was worried about in that tournament. And we got by, you know, the Hounds and played Hill Murray. And they had a lot of great players on that team, too. I remember there was, um, you know, John Dugas was the goalie. They had Zach Laval. They had uh, Ryan Black. Yeah, um, Zach Laval was good. Who was Slattery. Um, was Blake Heinrich on that team? Or? He left the year before. Okay. So he got he ran into Grant Bessie and Co. when he scored five goals. Yeah. Um, and then they – oh, gosh. They had, uh, I think, one of the Andersons that played at UMD. But, yeah, anyways, they had a good team. And um, like you said, that crowd was unbelievable. And just like kind of you're living in that moment so much, you don't like think that anything else matters other than – For sure. Know, the high school state tournament in Minnesota yeah. and just coming from a big Minnesota hockey family. It was just like, like it was, um, yeah, it, it, incredible experience. Um, and just, yeah, couldn't, couldn't believe we won. And, um, you know, so what I, happens after you guys win, you know, what's that? Ex- I mean, <laughs> what goes on? You need Diana after you win the state championship, your senior, yep. your high school hockey play playing days are over. It's yep. gotta be, it's gotta be kind of a fun night. Yeah, it was, I was just getting to that and it was, you know, kind of the like emotional part of it was, you know, after hugging my dad and like, you know, the, the moment where you just kind of like, you have tears of happiness, which doesn't happen much. And it was, that was a really cool experience. And then, um, going back to Braemar to drop our stuff off, we took like the trophy out on the, out on the ice and everyone was just like, just kind of running around acting like five-year-olds, like playing, I guess kind of like football on the ice with the trophy and stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah. then, you know, after that we had a, we had a big party at one of our managers place and, you know, their parents were cool with just like, yep, yeah, have anybody you want over. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that we drank as high schoolers cause you know, nobody, nobody does that, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was a late night and it was fun. And, you know, there were guys, um, 
that, uh, you know, I don't want to, you're good friends with them, but I remember him waking up the next morning with a bunch of hickeys on his neck and I'm sure it's a few other guys. That... I can't wait to bring that up to him. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking oh, about yeah. too. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so no, stories like that are just kind of unforgettable and just like, you know, you're 16, 17, 18 years old and just kind of like that time frame, you just think you're on top of the world and you're a senior, you're graduating. Well, you, you kind of are. Yeah, you don't really know what's next in your life. And it's just like you got a couple more months of high school and you think you're the man. Yeah. And that, I mean, that that state championship win for a double A team, you know, it's a little different for a single A, which, you know, bless their heart, East Grand Forks went back to back (laughs) a couple of years there and it was was unbelievable. (laughs) But it's still, you know, it's single A. It's a little different. You know, you don't fill the stadium and it's a little smaller, but you get that double A action in there and it's, it's bigger than any, it's almost bigger than any college game all year. Mm-hmm. It's as big as any NHL game all year that in, in terms of the crowd and, and almost people watching just in Minnesota here on TV even. So, um, that's a, that's a huge deal to win that tournament. That's, that's why like, when you go on and play hockey afterwards, whether it's juniors, college, pro, whatever it may be, and you bring up Minnesota high school and everybody's yeah. like, dude, shut the Chirping hell up. It, like, you know, dude, turn oh, the page. Minnesota. Yeah. Turn yeah. the page. You know, it's not that great. <laughs> you know, when you're like you said, 16, 17, 18 years old, playing in front of 18,000 fans, yeah. screaming fans, unbelievable. there is nothing like it. No, as a 16, 17, 18 year old kid, it's, well, you've bonkers. never you've never played you've never played in front of a crowd like that and in an atmosphere like that in that type of game. I mean, you you haven't even come close. Yeah. in high school, like in college, yeah. you play in some big rinks and there's, you you get the atmosphere close to that level. But you know, like, so you're a little more used to it in college if you end up going on or playing in a big game. But in high school, it's like you're playing in these high school rinks. So obviously, you know, some of the games are huge, and then. You get to the XL Energy Center, and it's like, holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. Well, and I think to go back to Trevor's point, too, is like there's another side of people. Like, because you play with some guys, it's like, oh, like, did you play in that state tournament? Like, I, I've like never, you know, I've heard enormous things about it. It's just like, I heard it's so cool and this and that. So, like, you get those people that are like, oh, turn the page. Like, that's probably not that cool. And then yeah. you get some people that are like, I've heard about it. It sounds unreal. And then, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. Show you a highlight. Clip. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I love it was, that. It was it was pretty neat. Oh yeah, you got to bring up the old highlights. Yeah, no, it wasn't that big of a deal. But uh, you want to watch this YouTube video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> highlights. It's got the mashup, and it's oh, that's sick. yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so after you know you win the state, you win the state tournament. Um, you end up going to BCHL up in British Columbia. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Nanaimo? Nanaimo? Nanaimo. Nanaimo. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. how do you end up getting up there? Mm-hmm. And what's the experience like when you get up there? Yeah, the, it was, you know, I really had a fortunate kind of, um, you know, falling into that spot. Because I was, I can't, not that I had my heart set on playing in the USHL, but it was, I thought I was going to get drafted in the USHL. I thought I was going to go there. But a lot of the teams, I've been talking to Penticton up there, and that's kind of the big team in the BCHL. And um, what had happened was a bunch of the USHL teams, I'm not really sure they caught wind of that and was like, Oh, like, you know, don't draft this guy. He's going to go there. Like it's, you're going to waste a pick. Um, so the next thing, you know, like I go second round of the NA draft to like Port Huron fighting Falcons. And I'm like, like, Oh, that's cool. But I don't really, I'm not going to go to Port Huron. Yeah. I don't want to end up in the middle of <laughs> Michigan and you know, just some team. And so, um, you know, I didn't go. I had graduation. I was playing on the golf team at the time. So Penticton was like, you don't need to come to the spring camp. That's fine. Like, just come to the fall camp. Like, looking forward to having you. Which, um, you know, looking back on it, it kind of screwed me over because I didn't, um, you know, solidify a spot then. And I guess they had signed so many guys and they had a great, you know, with all this stuff and the cutthroat stuff that goes on with juniors. So went up, did the, did the tryout there and uh, went extremely well, but went in and they already had 13 forward signed. Maximum number of imports was seven. They already had seven imports signed. So um, when I was in the exhibition games counting around, I was just like, oh, I did not going to make this team. Not because I can't play here, but because they have too many guys. And right after that, the coach called me. He was like, hey, like, you know, no doubt you can play here, but there's another team that wants you and we can't hold you on our team uh over on vancouver island and imo we can fly you out tomorrow and i was like yeah like why not so yeah. um 
you just put a positive attitude, went over there, didn't know anything, anybody or whatnot. And, you know, I was still brand new to the whole billet family thing. So I was just going into the unknown. And that was what was so cool about the adventure and just getting, you know, it's about an hour and a half north of Victoria, which is the the capital of, the, of British Columbia. Um, and it ended up being an incredible experience. Um, yeah. You know, coach was um you know like any other juniors coach he was a hard ass and yeah. i didn't yeah. you know we didn't see eye to eye and he's one of those classic guys that like will hold you back because he's trying to build a team and obviously all the guys are trying to get to college and play d1 and you know i remember um it was late in the season and he pulls me aside after practice he's just like yeah bo i had this great talk with uh jerry york he's like you know who jerry york is and i said yeah like of course I know who he is. Yeah. He's just like, you know, he, he's really interested in you, but I told him you need another year here. So I told him you're not ready to go and you're not ready to play college hockey yet. I'm just like, I'm sure that made you pumped. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you imagine me. hearing that. You're, you're just a kid and you hear that and you're like, are you like, a fucking it's idiot? Like, it's like that. It's like it's like. Have you ever seen that Chris Farley SNL skit where he's he's eating dinner at a really nice restaurant and that the, the waiter comes up and he's like oh he's drinking gosh. coffee and he's like that's actually our Colombian decaf and yes. Chris Farley's like what. What? <laughs> Starts fighting him, you motherfucker. <laughs> Sir, like, are you aware yeah. you're drinking Christian Colombian? Yeah, he's he's really. looking at his coach like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so literally. And I was just like, oh, you're fucking kidding me. So, you know, any, anyways, what ended up happening was, um, you know, lo- loved the city, loved my billet family. Guys were great there. Got to do it, picked up salmon fishing and fly fishing there. Um, it was kind of like the study abroad that you'd get in college that, like, I got to do playing yeah. um, juniors because it's like every bus ride you had, you got back on the ferry, you drive through kind of the mountains, you drive through really cool places. Um, and this, a lot of the cis- cities you play in were great too. And so, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed the league and our team, I think was like 500 at seasons as we got knocked out in first round, which honestly, like you were probably like, it's a, it, that's, yeah. that's kind of a, you know, it's a love hate situation. Yeah. Like you hate that you lose. No one wants to lose. We're all competitive here, yep. but then you do end up losing and you're like, ah, you know, like at summer, yeah. summer's here. Oh, well, and the big thing was, is like we ended like a month and a half before the USHL ended. So I was like back home, like yeah. end of March, beginning of April. Um, you know, what happened was I was just e- emailed a few colleges, just kind of like reached out to try and get my name out there. And, and Notre Dame was one of them that at, uh, responded. And it was like the, the lady, the front office. And I was like, okay, they probably aren't interested, but, um, Right at playoffs, they called me, the assistant coach. I was like, hey, we we lost a guy and we were looking to fill a spot. And, you know, if I ever see this guy in person, I'll definitely have to buy him a few beers because it was, you know, by far the greatest experience. But that guy was, was Sonny Milano. He, or Milano, or however you pronounce yeah, his Milano. name. He had decommitted from Notre Dame and they needed to fill his spot. And yeah. he committed to BC, decommitted from there to go to major juniors. Um, and because of that, um, it ultimately opened up that spot and they started talking to me and ended up working out, which was crazy. That's great. So. Yeah. No, I like, I like sharing those stories on how guys get to the USHL or BCHL or wherever they play juniors. Um, because I noticed you played in Nanaimo and, and then you end up playing for Notre Dame. It's absolute powerhouse hockey school. And it's, uh, it's just cool because, you know, like when you're a kid, and I know parents think this too, and I know a lot of parents and kids listen to this sometimes, and um, when you're a kid and you're a parent and your kid or you end up going to one of these random junior teams that you've never heard of and it's kind of not the place you wanted to go at the time or envisioned, mm-hmm. um, but there's just so many routes, you know, that you can take 100%. and still end up making it to where you want to be and you know there's probably some doubt along the way and and um just routes to wherever you get to um there's no there's no right route and and obviously when you're a kid and parent you think there is a right route and you have this envision but it's not always that's not always how it works out and it's just cool to hear different stories and how you got you know you got there and then you got to notre dame it's just it's it's pretty cool so um Thanks for sharing that. But yeah, now you're in Notre Dame. You yep. you end up committing there. I mean, what's your thoughts? Like, did you go on a visit when you were in juniors? And like, did you see it at all? Like, where did you envision yourself going to college before 
this happen? Yeah, those are all those are all great questions. A lot, lot to unload there. But I mean, like any, any you know, playing career, it was um, it was honestly a whirlwind because I never it was never recruited. Everyone's like, oh, like you didn't want to go to Minnesota? Like you you were probably a Gore fan. It's like, well, it would have been cool, but they were recruiting those guys as ninth, tenth graders and eleventh grade. It's like I was never on that fast track and. Um, you know, I wanted to play big 10. I wanted to play at a big school. My dad wanted me to play at Michigan and he had, he knew the coaches, you know, funny thing was his junior senior year was red Berenson's like first two years of coaching and red Berenson retired like our you know junior senior yeah, year. Yeah. So he coached for that long. So my dad slid relationships was trying to get me to go there. So I'd been talking to them a little bit, talking to Princeton, Michigan tech a little bit, but it was nothing. I didn't do any visits. And so it was just like the quickest turnaround ever. Once Notre Dame reached out to me, um, BC, uh, HL season ended, went out and visited them in May. And they're like, yeah, like, you know, we want you this and that, like, we'll think it over. We'll let you know in a week. And then, you know, a week later they texted me like, Hey, like we want you to wear number 29. I was like, Holy shit. Like this is happening all way too fast. And I was either playing, I go and play it in Nanaimo or I was talking to, um, you know, Kerry Eads, who was coaching Sioux Falls that year, and they yeah. just built that brand new yep. stadium. And he was like, Hey, Bo, we got no veterans. Like, we need a guy like you that's played to your juniors and this and that. And I was like, Oh, like, sweet. So I kind of had my heart set on that. And it's like, It sounds like a, a good opportunity. But then obviously, if I would have said no to Notre Dame, my family, my none of them understood what juniors was in the first place. They're yeah. like, Okay, like, you're doing what to do what? Like, yeah. you are <laughs> just not. Going it's to tough. Cool? Yeah. It's yeah. tough explaining to people that don't know, and yeah. even you and your family don't know about juniors growing up in Minnesota. No, you no have, idea. You just you're uneducated on yeah. all of it. Your friends are uneducated. They don't believe it. You know, I remember, I remember when I was in high school and and I went to try out in Ann Arbor. Um, I told my couple of my teachers, you know, I was going to be gone for a week, and they're like, "What? What, what are you talking? About? <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah. To do what? Yeah. No, you're not. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm going to try out for Team USA." And they're like, "No, you're not. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah. Your, your, your times tables in your math class. Come on. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was. I mean, exactly that. And um, went on a visit, and then a week later, it was that, and then a week after. Um, that it was beginning of June. I was in there for summer school. So it was just kind of the quickest, like three week turnaround where I had no idea if I was playing juniors or what was going to happen. And then that came knocking. It was like, I can't not pass this up. And I knew it was going to be kind of a tough route because I was going in, you know, we had a lot of drafted guys and I wasn't going to play a lot my first couple of years, but the, um, the experience was incredible. The, uh, just the campus. Have either of you guys seen the campus? There? Uh, yeah. It's, it's historic. Yeah. Yeah, I played one game there. You're, I, I played one game there at their new rink. I mean, it's yeah, it's incredible. The facilities are nuts. I don't know what it looked like before that. I think I've, I I was there. We played them when I was in Ann Arbor. The first year it was built, so I never I had never seen what it was before that. But what they have, what you guys have now is. It's top notch. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no Ralph, but it's it's, it's pretty. It's, yeah, it's perfect for that size. Yeah. We don't get the crowd that. Um, you know, no doubt gets, but like, I think we you know, held around like 5,000 people, which was perfect. Cause you could get, you know, 2000 students there a night. And the rest of it was just like, you know, the townies that love, you know, Notre Dame basketball. They love Notre Dame football. They love the lacrosse, the baseball, you know, yeah. everything. And, um, you know, the rink before that was in the field house next to the, the basketball stadium. And it was just this giant blue curtain that dropped down in the middle of the field house. They had like stands come out and then those like, you know, pull out risers so it just looked like a dump and yeah. so like teams would go in this is when they were in the ccha and be like oh we have to you know play notre dame like their building sucks and like the notre yeah. dame guys were like oh well, we'd relish it because teams th would take us lightly and we just absolutely pound them and thump them but um you know huge for recruiting obviously to get a new building like that and to come in but you know people will drive up to it and they're bringing their kids to practice there and like hey like you know where the rink is, and it's like, yeah, you're looking at it, and it looks like a, it looks like every other building on campus, kind of like a medieval castle, yeah, yeah, it does. Like Bowser's castle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you tell them like, and they're like, holy shit, like I can't believe that. So that, um, that part of it was amazing, and I think just like the football games and just that kind of smaller school is only 8,500 undergrads, so it's not that big, but it's got that enormous, you know, brand and it does everything yes. with yeah. it. Yeah. So that was that was the coolest part about it is like in the fall, 
the campus would be super quiet until about Thursday. Then all these people come rolling in. Then Friday, it'd be really crowded. Town, yeah. yeah, and then on Saturday, obviously you had the football tailgates that were just a riot. And the, I mean, the team was usually pretty good when I was there. So the games, like, I, I, I was just always baffled by the guys on our team that didn't buy the tickets, didn't want to go to the games. It's like, okay, you're going to get to go to me for these year because we're going to have interferences and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, why wouldn't you go to as many of these? As you you actually had guys that wouldn't go to the football games. Yeah, they were just like, you know what? We just want to either stay at the tailgate or go to bar and watch it. Which I like. I understand. That's fine. Was, I, yeah. I get that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, look at it this way. It's like our four years is going to go by like you know that, and then after that, you you don't know when you're going to get to a game here. And it's like, if you do, it might only be one game a season because you're not going to come back to six games a year. Yeah. Right. So, but you know, the basketball games were a riot, and you know, there was no Greek life there. But the uh, the teams we had, you know, I didn't play a lot freshman and sophomore year, but obviously we almost ran into you guys, and then you guys took it home that year, and we had a good team and a lot of draft picks. And um, junior year, we had a great team. That was, and that was kind of the the really fun year that kind of turned my experience around. Cause it, again, if you know, you guys have been on that side where you don't play a lot and it's hard to feel a part of the team when you're not in the locker room for games. Cause it's like, you can be for sure. You could be there for practices and like, you got to keep a positive attitude and mentally it really, it's really fatiguing not to be there for those, those times where it's like you're through the thick and thin of battling the adversity games. we are not a part of that. And you have a really tough class schedule and that's beaten down on you. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, you know, there were a, couple of moments where my mom was like, you should just walk onto the golf team. And, you know, as a, as a decent player back in high school, and I thought about it, I talked to some of the players on the team and realized, you know, the biggest part that I think all of us as hockey players realize is how much the team really means to you. Yeah. The players in the locker room make it like some of your best, a, a lot of your best friends that 100%. you're still talking with day in and day out. And I think that was like, if the culture of hockey wasn't such a, incredible thing that it's like unexplainable right because until you go through it you don't know what it's like yeah um and with that that's like the only reason that was able to you know kind of push me through there and be like you know just keep grinding just keep putting the hours like you're going to get playing time and keep a positive attitude and that's like the only way you're going to make it in the lineup and so i just kind of put that upon myself it's like even if i have to be the cheerleader and play four shifts a night like i'd rather be warming up with the guys and going through the whole thing 100 percent than not um, yeah and it, it- it's tough at the time, you know, like it's really hard during it to be supportive, be positive, you know, feel like you're part of the team at the time. But now when you look back on it, it's like it really is all about the relationships, the yeah. the friendship that you have it's, with all the guys in the locker room. Especially when you make it to the next level and you realize how much of a business hockey is, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you look back at college and you go, holy shit. That was We had best. some fucking times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Absolutely. You, you go through that grind and everybody's story is different. That's something that we touch on with almost all of our guests, right? Your way to college hockey was different than some. You know, what you did while you were at Notre Dame is different than some. So it's, it's just interesting to hear that. Mm-hmm. And it's good on you for just kind of putting your head down and just saying, hey. You know, I could be somewhere worse, you know? Oh, it's, yeah. It's, and, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely do have those times where you you think about other options, yeah. you know? Like, there's is the grass greener over there? Is it, oh. is it greener over there? It's not that green right here right now, you know? Like, I'm looking at these other options. They look pretty, you know, they're sparkling a little bit to me. And um, yeah. it's, it's tough, you know? You, but yeah, I mean, you 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 stick it out and end up playing, and it probably it obviously ended up working out because you play pro after. So yeah, so but you know to go back to that point is like you're thinking like after a duster skate, you're like, oh, geez, I wish I would have played another year juniors. It's really easy to think about that, yeah. but it's like the long run. It's like I'm getting a great education. Like I'm going to keep grinding. Let's let's just stick with it. And then you know, junior year we we made it to the Frozen Four, got absolutely thwomped by Denver, like six to one. But just the fact that we we took down Minnesota, took down UMass Lowell in overtime. Time and we hadn't been to Frozen Four since you know 2011 was a bit was a big deal. Um, and to play in our backyard in Chicago was really cool. And then to know that like we still had pretty much our whole team coming back our senior year was awesome. And um, you know played a lot as a junior and then played pretty much every game as a senior. And um, you know that that experience was incredible too. You know we made it all the way. We got back to where we wanted to get to. And um, <clears throat> you know that was one of the coolest experiences was. 
um, I blew my shoulder out in the Big Ten Championship playing Ohio State. It just scored a goal. And then I think it was like LaRock, if you guys remember that defense. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. It came down, awkward hit, shoulder dropped. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I've never felt so much pain in my life. You yeah. Know, shoulder dislocation. It's just like a grade three or separation or whatever the heck it was. And um, so I, I was freaking out because like, I'm not going to get to play in the first two rounds of um, <clears throat> the NCAA. And we ended up beating Michigan Tech four minutes into overtime so it was just like i'm freaking out like my buddy from back home like came out to watch it with me and like yeah we may have said like two words to each other the whole game because i'm just like clenching my fist yeah. like we need to win this and <laughs> yeah and it was it, it was kind of a silly situation too because i was just kind of like the again like a the enthusiastic kind of loose guy keeping everybody um you know from getting too wound up and they had me warm up with the team, even though I wasn't playing just to like get the boys going and stuff like that. Cause they're like, Hey, we value your leadership and your you know, positivity and exuberance to everybody. So it's like, we want you warming up for these games, go on the ice and skate and then get off and you can change and whatever. So it was a cool experience to have that. And then, you know, after we beat Michigan tech, we beat Providence and scored with like seven seconds left in the game to advance to the frozen four. And, you know, prior to that big 10 championship, we won in overtime, like 10 minutes into it. Before that we beat Penn state with like 20 seconds. You guys are just in barn burner after <laughs> barn. Oh, yeah. it's just, our coach yeah. was, they call us the cardiac kids. And, you know, we go to play Michigan, my dad's alma mater and we beat them. We scored with like four seconds left. So it was just like unbelievable. And I, you know, I'll never forget one of the coolest moments was, you know, walking back through the tunnel after we did that. And he was like overhanging. It just like gave me a huge high five. And I could literally just see like, again, those tears of joy coming down his face. Cause yeah. it was just like for me and him, just a really cool bonding moment. And, yeah. and I don't know. He may have been, he may have been just hammered drunk. I don't, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Not but, he was, but yeah. it's the same thing. But yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you bring up a good point. There's like, and it's kind of how Ols definitely me a little bit where people think of hockey and they think of skill and how they look on the ice yeah. and what they can do. You know, they play hard, they're skilled, do they do this. No one really thinks about inside the locker room, how guys are inside the locker room. And that's a huge part of hockey, which, which it doesn't, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet. It doesn't really resonate with the fans much because they don't know much but mm -hmm. when you have a guy like that like Ols was um like i'm sure you were in the locker room to you know calm guys down almost when they're a little too wound up like you said and and to play that role it's a huge part of the game oh, yeah. that no one really talks about but you do have a huge impact on the game when you're that guy who can calm guys down and enlighten the mood a little bit because everyone knows when you're playing those big time games, you you're gripping <laughs> you're gripping yeah you're gripping your stick too tight you're you're clenching your jaw you know when you got that guy who can who can say the right thing at the right moment in the locker room, everyone kind of loosens up a little bit and they're like hey, yeah you know, might play my game a little better and it, it that plays a huge factor so I, I like that you brought that up because. Not a lot of people know that about hockey and, and even any sport in general. So. No, no. And again, that's just the biggest thing was like through – you're playing games that are as emotional as that, and you guys went through it. Like you're playing these games that's like high stakes, huge stage, and it's like we have a chance to do something special. Like it's going to happen. Guys are going to get really wound up, and it's like you got to be able to be a leader, and it's like in yourself knowing that you're a senior on the team. It's like you take it upon yourself to do something because it's like – I wasn't the goal scorer. I wasn't the guy running the power play and this and that. So it's like, okay, my role, make sure the guys that were down, get them up, make sure the guys that are gripping the stick too tight, get them loose, yeah. you know, anything like that. But, uh, it, you know, it was, it was a really cool experience. And then going to play, you know, UMD in the, in the finals, it was my five year anniversary of winning state at the Exxon Energy Center in St. Paul, which was a cool, cool ordeal in itself. And then, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately we fell a goal short and we thought we were going to be able to tie it up like we did with all those other games. And, um, you know, that is tough feeling losing that game. But, uh, you know, one little story I gotta, I gotta share and I gotta give a shout out to Matt Steves and I'll have to tell him to listen to this. But the night before we played UMD, we we're in our hotel and I, I completely forgot about this prank until today. We, we knew like, cause eh, I don't know how many shifts we'll get tomorrow. And like, I couldn't sleep anyways. And oh, so, yeah. you know, you're right. You can't. You you're just there's like, no way. Yeah. It's like, you got the games in less than 24 hours. It's like, God, like you're just, you're just itching to get out there to see what happens. And so we, um, <laughs> I forget what hotel we were staying in, but anyways, we went in our two buddies. It was Tony Bretzman and Luke Ripley's two defensemen. 
Um, and those guys weren't going to be playing in the game, unfortunately. So we were like, Hey, like, let's go play a prank on those guys. And we're in the hotel and somehow they weren't in their rooms yet. And so we got in the rooms, they had their key and they, they didn't have their key. So they were locked out of there. And somehow we knew that the window was connected to Dill Malmquist's uh, room. Yeah. So it's like, we had a getaway to do whatever we wanted. <laughs> and, um, Anyways, we totally just reconfigured their whole bedroom and we put like their mattresses in their showers <laughs> and we turned like their, their whole like frames upside down and it looked like a fort, like a bomb had gone off. <laughs> and then like they didn't know we were in there. So then we got out of the window and got on the ledge. So we're like three stories high and we're scaling this ledge that's like a foot and a half wide and like it's snowy and icy out. It's like, we probably could have died, but like we thought it was completely worth it. Mom was let us in, he let us out. We ran to our rooms and I don't know how those guys got back in, but they were just ballistic with us after it. Like they were like, they were so mad. They couldn't laugh at us, but it was just like, it was probably 12 at night. We just, we couldn't sleep. And so it was just one of those no, funny prank stories those <laughs> some, <laughs> yeah. that's actually a great idea i should have done something like that in tampa bay because there's no chance you can sleep before no. that you know it doesn't matter what role you play in the team no. it's just like you know how much is on the line and you're like it's just racing through your mind and you can't everything you do you're in your mind like trying to think of other things you know you're trying to like look at other things yeah. and like look like Think of other things you can't. It's impossible. You can't sleep. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> but it's also like so exciting because like once the morning does come, you know, like, all right, here we go. Like, go this, yeah. is, this is what it is, you know. Yeah. But uh, I did want to ask you, Notre Dame, notorious for, you know, the gold helmet. Mm -hmm. So are those painted before every game? Because there's got to be some chips on them after, right? Like, and whenever you guys come out, they're just pristine, just gold. It's it's fucking sick. That's that's a good question. Um, so the way they do it is, it's really cool. They take a, I I don't know how much real gold goes into it, but it's the same way they do the football helmets, which makes it cooler. And it's this giant like kind of pot of a gold cast, and they take the helmet shells, whether it's the football or the hockey, and they just dip the shell in it. And they pull it out, they put the padding back in, they let it dry, or they let it dry, then put the padding back in it. Um, and it's got some sort of like 24 carat like mixed in there. So it's like those helmets are priceless. Like the football, the hockey, like you could, I don't know what kind of number you could put on it. And I'll never, I, you know, somehow was able to get two of the helmets with the Frozen Four stickers on it, which was cool. But to your point, I, I don't know if there's real gold or what it is, but when it chips, it almost had like a, like a gold whiteout marker. It was kind of this cool. Oh, so they'd fill it in. If they'd it, fill yeah. it in. Yeah. So it was, there was one of two things. They had like a marker where they could kind of like color or they had like a little, um, it was kind of like if you took a sticker, like a, like a number that you put on the back, yeah. but it was just like a gold thing and they would cut that and then they put it on there. Um, and then it would look again, like you couldn't tell the difference cause you weren't that close enough to it, but it was the same thing with the football team. Like they would just kind of brush it up with a yeah. pen or just like a little sticker that had the same exact sparkle on it. So that's sweet. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to bring this up, but the only time I've ever played Notre Dame was in when I was in Ann Arbor. So we go in there, it's an exhibition game. You, yeah. you guys know, like whenever you play the oh, yeah. U S team, it's like, uh, like, some of the guys are hungover. No one really cares. You know, the U.S. team's coming in buzzing. Like, yeah. this is the biggest game of our lives. And that's that's what I was thinking at the time. You know, like, walking in this new Notre Dame rink. And, and they show us around the uh, the locker room and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and we had a guy on our team committed to Notre Dame, Dawson Cook. I don't oh, know yeah. If, yeah. I'm going to his wedding in a uh, month and a yeah, half. Yeah, so Cookie's in there, you know, obviously like, oh, yeah, this place is sick, eh, boys? Like, <laughs> committed. Like, yeah, fuck you, Cookie. Like, <laughs> I could totally see him saying that, too. <laughs> But anyways, we get it. So we're playing Notre Dame. They're they're actually ranked number one overall at the time. So we're we're all jacked up. Like these guys are unbelievable. And Anders Lee is on the team, mm -hmm. and, and he's just an that guy um, stinks. He's an, oh he's an absolute <laughs> animal. But anyways, I've also knows this about me. I've got the I've got the secret reverse hit. You know that surprises guys. No one no one expects it coming. So Anders Lee is you know I'm playing in this game, and Anders Lee is four checking me and. He has no idea what I've got in my back pocket. <laughs> and I've got this reverse check in my back pocket that I'm I've already got my hand in my back pocket seeing him seeing him coming. So he he's four checking me, he tries to tries to run me through the wall and I pull out the reverse hit and just absolutely bury Anders Lee in Notre Dame 
And no it's probably the second biggest hit of my life. <laughs> the first one is against McDavid, and then the <laughs> second is. one's Honors oh Lee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honors Lee was a little more impressive, though, because, I mean, what is the guy? 6'3, 230 pounds? I mean, he's, Shredded. A, he's an animal. Yeah. And his and, legs. And, and these, and the pe- yeah, and the people watching this, his, his thighs, mine are this size. Honors Lee's are this <laughs> size. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't know how he shops for jeans. There's no way he can find any they have pants to be custom. that they yeah. have to. I get some tailor fit at Lulu. So. <laughs> yeah. But that guy could have played. He could have been a quarterback. He, he could have been an NFL the, quarterback. Yeah, he could. He had offers from like all these Big Ten teams. Like that, that was the joke that they were saying. Like when Brady Quinn was like shit in the bed, they're like, yeah, and the best quarterback on campus is actually a hockey player, Henry <laughs> yeah. Lee. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he is, he's just incredible. And obviously he's... It's no surprise he's had the career he's had in the NHL. I mean, he's one of the better players in the NHL right now. And yeah, yeah, it's nuts. But um, I did want to kind of touch on your your pro hockey playing sure. career a little bit too, because you played in some cool places. I mean, you're in South Carolina, Atlanta, Worcester. You know, how do you decide after college you're going to go play pro, and then what are you thinking of it when you get there? Yeah, um, I guess to start with it right after. Um, the season had ended. I kind of had my heart set on. I was like, God, you know, I, I still have a lot more to give the game, as most guys do that play D one. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, some guys are ready to move on, get a job, and like with a Notre Dame degree, I wouldn't ever blame them. It's like, yeah, like by all means, go to Chicago, go to New York, go to California, go do something big. And a lot of guys get into the business world right away. And I was just like, yeah, I just kind of felt snubbed by my head coach. And you know, Jeff Jackson's a kind of an old school guy. And he plays a lot of mind games, and um, just felt like I didn't you know, really get, I, you know, I got a fair shot there, but not, I could have been played more and was just kind of underutilized as going back to like, I had to find a role and be more that locker room guy. And so anyways, it was, um, you know, reaching out to a couple guys that were in the ECHL, that Notre Dame guys and calling them and not asking them to get a trout or anything. It was just like, Hey, like, what's your advice here? And like one guy in particular, his name was Patrick Gall and he played for South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Gallsy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he'd been there for like seven seasons yeah. already. And he was like, actually, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I know you're not like looking for a try or anything, but like, I've heard great things about you. Like, I'll tell, I'll tell our coach, and like, I'll get back to you. And like, he literally, like, three days later, like, calls, he calls me. He's like, oh yeah, like, he wants to sign you. I was like, oh, like, sweet. And so I was all fired up. It's like South Carolina. Like, this sounds unreal. Like Charleston. Like, I can't wait. Like, you know, there's great golf and great fishing and. Um, you know, heard there were good looking women there, so it was like it sounded like a sounds a terrible total pa- yeah, all <laughs> fishing, good looking women. So, yeah, yeah. It, Send me it, it was for playing there for eight games after my senior year. That place is unreal. I love Charleston. To there's death. some there's right? some unbelievable spots. In the unbelievable. Coast. You yeah. wouldn't yeah. think it. You know, there there might be there might I've I've had this debate with people there. There's, I think there's better places to play in the coast in terms of town mm-hmm. than the American League. Yeah, easily. In Absolutely. terms of towns, there's there's some easily. really cool towns in the East Coast League that yeah. are like you want to play there. It's yeah, it's a good time. Char- Charleston is one of them. It's yeah. beautiful. It's super cool. But anyway, I know, hundred percent. I I think, and I'll get into it later on. But like, there's a couple of cities that are really underrated too. Um, like Rapid City being one of them. I'll t- I'll touch on that later. But um, you know, Charleston. Um, you know, was training all season and then, you know, get the news that that coach, his name is Ryan Warsawski. He took the Charlotte checkers assistant coaching job. And that really, really hurt me because that guy like knew me, knew my background, this and that they brought in some dude, not, really nice guy, like good guy you get along with, but just so analytical and so just about the numbers, drawing up plays, this, that, and like, honestly was probably getting, you know, told from the front office who to play and that he's not calling the shots. The team was under 500, which in South Carolina, like doesn't happen that much yeah. because they're, they're such a big fan base that gets like really easily angered. And, um, they brought this guy in from Lethbridge university. 